Hello, Mighty Companions. This is Earl Purdy, and I want to welcome you to Hardcore Course in Miracles here on Facebook Live. I want to welcome you to Hardcore Course in Miracles here on Facebook Live. And we're going to talk about, we're going to continue to talk about the practical application of the ideas of A Course in Miracles and how is it that you can guarantee that you will be acting from a plan that actually works. One of the most striking things that the Course in Miracles says is that there, there is a divine plan. There is a divine plan. There is a plan for your life that will give you guaranteed happiness. But there are certain things you have to recognize and certain ways you have to look at things in order to allow that to happen. So we're going to talk about even deeper planning. And so as our mighty companions come in, we're going to start out with our theme song from John Christmas at johnchristmas.com, which is called We Are One. And that will help us get centered. There's a call for God. I see it everywhere. Everybody's running scared. And the thing is turning upside down. It's telling us that love is who I am. You and me were not that far apart. Yeah, we're beating the same heart. We've been together from the start. We're going to talk about planning. You, can you hear it? Tell me, can you feel it? Put your arms around it. Know that we are one. We are one. This is Earl Purdy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to Hardcore Course in Miracles. So good to be with you. And it's come together and understand. That love was born inside of everyone He's waiting for us to choose love as ourselves Yeah When you choose love, you know you choose me too and Everyone becomes a part of you And then you will know that love is who I am Mighty Companion, this is Earl Purdy, and I am so glad to be here with you to focus in on some san to focus in on some sanity. And of course, in miracles, it's definitely about getting in touch with our sane, loving mind and getting in touch and allowing ourselves to connect with our higher power. There's only, the Course in Miracles has these guidelines. If you want to hear this and hear it the correct way that will benefit you, this is the attitude that the Course in Miracles says that you have to take if you really want to get the benefit of A Course in Miracles. I've been teaching and learning A Course in Miracles for over 42 years. So let me help save you some time. 
in dealing with the course in miracles, mighty companion. <clears throat> Remember only this. This is from a course in miracles. Remember only this. You need not believe the ideas in the course in miracles. So you don't have to believe the ideas. You don't have to accept the ideas. You don't have to even welcome the ideas that I'm going to share with you from a course in miracles. Some of the ideas you may actively resist some of the ideas. I'm the divine repetition teacher. I'm your remembering coach. I don't analyze a course in miracles. This is not an analyzation of the course in miracles class. This is a remembering it application class. My focus is on the practical applications of these ideas in your everyday life as you perceive your everyday life. This is not a class that's gonna be focused in on a lot of abstract concepts but on how we can use this. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> I just want to be clear because you're going to be disappointed if you think that it's about analyzing. It's really about remembering and applying the idea so that we can have the miracles and the happiness that the Course in Miracles promises. So some of the ideas you may actively resist, some of the ideas you will find hard to believe, some of the ideas may startle you. You're not being asked to judge and analyze the ideas at all. It's the use and using the ideas that will give the ideas meaning. What will give the ideas meaning? What will give the ideas meaning is using the ideas because the Course in Miracles first and foremost wants to correct our perception. It's it works with our thinking. It works with the mind, first and foremost. So if you use these ideas, if you use these, this, this guidance, then you will see that it's true if you use it. If you think you're going to know it's true by analyzing it, then you're probably going to be very disappointed because the Course in Miracles gives you an experience, and the experience comes from using the ideas, not from analyzing the ideas, okay? Um, we're going to be in the text, and we're going to be on Lesson 135 in A Course in Miracles in the workbook section. There are three sections to The Course in Miracles. There are three sections, a text, a workbook, and a manual for teachers. We're going to be on Lesson 135, and we're going to start out. Uh, it's, it, the lesson is, if I defend myself, I am attacked. And we're going to uh, start out with a quick review of uh, paragraph 11, which is, it starts out, a healed mind doesn't plan. But don't forget it said, a healed mind doesn't plan. And the Course in Miracles defines a healed mind as a mind without fear, anger, guilt, grievances. And it's a mind without any belief in separation. So that's a healed mind. <clears throat> so a heal mind doesn't plan. I teach in a question and answer format. And um, it says, and this is on page 252 in the workbook. And it says a heal mind doesn't plan. A heal mind doesn't plan. So what does a heal mind do? A heal mind carries out the plan that, re that it receives through listening to wisdom that's not its own. So a mind that's healed, it doesn't. it has plans, but it's not carrying out the plans that it's making up. It's carrying out a plan for happiness that it's receiving from a higher self that is more wise than it is. Uh, so when you are getting smart and you're beginning to heal your mind, you carry out a plan that you receive through listening to God, your divine self, and you wait. How long do you wait? You wait until you have been taught what should be done. So you keep studying, for instance, The Course in Miracles. I would keep studying it and doing what it's saying. And then I would proceed to do it. So I would let Spirit teach me what needs to be done. And then I would do it. So if you, are, if you have a healed mind, you carry out plans that you receive from the Holy Spirit, your higher self. And you wait until you've been taught what should be done. And then you proceed to do it. And what else happens with a healed mind? A healed mind doesn't depend on itself. A mind that's healed, a person that's healed, is a person who does not depend on themselves for anything except their what? 
to know that you will be adequate to fulfill any of the plans that you receive from the divine. So any plans that comes from the universal mind, any plans that come from the divine are going to be plans that you are able to do. It would be plans that you are adequate to fulfill. A plan coming to you from the divine, a plan coming to you from higher power is going to be a plan that you will be adequate to do and you will also be secure that there won't be any obstacles that will keep you from being successful at achieving the plan that you receive from the divine. So does that mean any plan that you get from God, that you are a divine plan, you'll be adequate to do it and there won't be obstacles to impede your way? That's exactly what the Course in Miracles is saying. Because there is no obstacles that can really, like he says, not impede its progress to accomplishment of any goal that serves the greater plan established for the good of anyone. So any so anytime you're filling the divine plan, which is a plan that benefits everyone, there will be no obstacles to impede your progress. You will be adequate to do it because God's plan would be a plan that is established for the good of everyone, including you. So a plan that comes from love a plan that comes from God, a divine plan, your true plan is going to be a plan that you receive through listening to wisdom greater than your wisdom. You will know that you are going to be adequate to do it. And also there won't be any obstacles to impede the progress of you following a plan that you're receiving from spirit. Because any plan that you receive from spirit is going to be a plan that is established for the good of everyone. This is this is a class on love. This is a class on love. And again, we're in lesson 135 in the Courts and Miracles workbook. If I defend myself, I'm a, I am attacked and it's talking about plans. Now, now we're going to jump because I've already covered this a few weeks ago. So we're going to jump to paragraph... 14. So, okay, so now we're going to go to page 254, paragraph 14 in the workbook for students, lesson 135. So we're going to be on the paragraph that says, it is perhaps not easy to perceive that self-initiated plans are but defenses. Okay, here we go. Um, I want to help you read the course and make it easier. The Course in Miracles explains itself as it goes along. Don't let your mind tell you that this is hard for you to understand. It's only hard for you to understand in my perception if you're insisting on using your past learning to try to define what the Course is saying rather than, rather than listening to the Course. So we're gonna, go, we're gonna go through this. It is perhaps not easy to perceive that Self-initiated plans are but defenses. A plan that is self-initiated, do you know that a plan that a person initiates themselves, that they make up themselves, do you know that a plan that a person makes up themselves is a defense? So that, so really, plans are defenses. And plans are made to serve the purpose that plans were made to realize. So plans, <laughs> I love how the Course says, plans are the means by which a frightened mind would undertake its own protection at the cost of truth. So is the Course in Miracles saying only a frightened mind makes its own plans for how it's going to ultimately take care of itself? That's exactly what the Course in Miracles is saying. That self-initiated plans Plans that people initiate without checking in with their higher self, God, spirit, the universe. Self-initiated plans are just what a frightened mind or a frightened person makes up in order to undertake their own protection. But when you are making plans because you are afraid to take care of yourself, then that's costing you the awareness of the truth because the truth is you are sustained 
by the love of God, a greater intelligence. The truth is, if you learn how to listen to the Holy Spirit, your higher self, then your higher self, your divine self, would give you a plan for you to carry out. And it would be a plan that's going to be successful because you would be adequate for the plan. And also you wouldn't have a lot of struggle and obstacles because any plan that you receive from spirit is going to be a plan that there would be no obstacles to, to, to impede your progress because the plan would be a plan that would be benefiting everyone. When you, when you are a frightened person and you haven't made that connection with your divine self, you are busy trying to come up with, that person is busy trying to come up with a lot of plans to take care of themselves. Now, do you know, it's not really difficult to realize in some forms which these self-deceptions take. Uh, sometimes our denial of the truth is very obvious, uh, but sometimes People don't realize they're not practicing the truth by doing self-initiated plans. So planning isn't often seen as a defense. Planning isn't often seen as an attack upon yourself or something that's making you afraid because The Course in Miracles is about teaching us things that we are not aware that we're doing. The Course in Miracles uh, is a teacher, is a teaching that allows you to do a lot of shadow work. It, it allows you to heal those parts of yourself and those parts of your thinking that you might not be even aware that you have. So what did we just hear so far? We, what did we hear in that paragraph? First of all, do you know that it, the Course in Miracles has already told us that we people usually don't see their personal plans as defenses. Most people don't see their personal plans as something that they are doing out of their fear so that they can try to make sure that they are protected. But when you try to make plans and leave out God, then you're doing it because you're afraid and you're not listening to the plan that will really work and bring you the joy and happiness that you want. But you don't know that according to the course. Okay. So what is the mind engaged in planning for itself doing? The mind that's engaged in planning for itself, the person that's engaged in planning for themselves without tapping into their higher self, that's a person who's really trying to, uh, their mind is occupied in setting up control of future happenings. So a mind that's planning for itself, is it telling us that a person who is doing self-initiated plans or trying to control what's going to happen in the future? Yes. When people are planning, they're trying to control what they think is going to happen in the future. If I'm planning to be a doctor, then I'm trying to control what's going to happen in the future because what's going to happen in the future is I'll be a doctor. So a person that's planning, that's a person who's really trying to control the future. Okay. A person that's planning is a person that's trying to control what has not happened yet because the future means not yet. When you say you want something in the future, you're saying I want it in the not yet. So it, then it says the man engaged in planning for itself is occupied in setting up control of future happenings. So if you're trying to control, if a person is trying to control what's going to happen in the future by coming up with their own little personal plans that they think is going to guarantee that they're going to be safe in the future, that's a person who doesn't think that they're going to be provided for by God. That's a person who does not believe that they're going to be provided for by their creator. That's a person who doesn't believe that they're going to be provided for is a person that's engaged in planning for themselves by coming up with their own ideas without asking spirit about what's going to happen in the future. So a person that's planning is a frightened person who's trying to control what's going to happen in the future because they don't believe in a higher power. They don't, a person that's constantly trying to come up with their own plans without checking in with spirit is a person that doesn't think they're going to be provided for unless they make their own provisions. 
So a person, does that mean a person that's planning for themselves with self-initiated plans, that that's basically a person that doesn't believe that God, that higher power, the universe is going to sustain them, and so they think they have to protect themselves? Yes. Now, don't misperceive what I'm saying. I'm not saying that you won't have safety and protection. I'm saying that you want to have the safety and protection because you're following a plan that's coming from a wisdom that's greater than yours. And you're going to carry out this, that plan that you're getting from a wisdom that's greater than yours. Because you know that any divine plan for your happiness that comes from your creator is going to be a divine plan for your happiness that you can fulfill and that you won't be dealing with a lot of obstacles that will be impeding your progress because it's a plan that's going to benefit you and it's going to benefit everybody else. So whenever a person believes that they have to take care of themselves and they're not allowing themselves to receive a divine plan from God, then the Court says in the next sentence, what does the next sentence say? Time becomes a future emphasis. So when a person is planning and trying to control what's going to happen in the future because they're trying to take care of themselves because they're frightened that they won't be provided for, then that, then that puts your emphasis on time. And you think you're going to control what's going to happen. The person thinks they're going to control what happens in the future. And we think time becomes a future emphasis to be controlled by learning and experience obtained from past events and previous beliefs. So, so what happens when the frightened mind believes it has to take care of itself and come up with its own plan because it's not listening to wisdom that's greater than its own and it's scared, then the frightened mind believes that it has to control what's gonna happen in the future or it won't be provided for. And you think that you can control what's going to happen in the future by what you learned in your past experience and and from the experience that you got from events that happened to you in the past and from your previous beliefs. What are you talking about, Earl? I know it makes so much sense. It's hard to hear. I'll say it again. The once I believe that I've got to take care of myself because I don't have faith in a higher power and I don't think I'm going to be provided for, then Earl's going to try to come up with a whole lot of plans for how he can be provided for in the future. So I'm gonna put my emphasis on everything that I have experienced and learned in the past. I'm gonna be focusing on what I've learned and experienced in the past to try to plan for the future. Now, what happens when you put all your emphasis on what you learned in the past to try to plan for the future? Well, do you know the Course in Miracles says you're gonna overlook right now. You're gonna overlook the present. If all your focus is on what happened in the past, so that you can try to control what's going to happen in the future, but well, then you're focusing on the past and you're focusing on the future. And if a person is focusing on the past and future, what are they overlooking? Well, I'm overlooking right now. If I'm thinking about my past and what I learned in the past, and if I'm thinking about the future and how I can try to control the future because I'm so afraid that I won't be provided for by God, so I've got to try to, you know, uh, figure out what I should do in the future. Well, I'm going to base a lot of that on my past experiences and the things that happened to me in the past. So then I'm going to overlook the power of the present. I'm going to overlook right now. Why is it that a person would overlook the present? Well, the Course in Miracles says, well, because um, you think the past has taught you enough to let your mind direct the course of your future. i say it again. There's no reason for me to focus on the truth of what's happening right now and to take a look at what's happening right now when I'm planning to take care of myself in the future because I think what I went through in the future and what I learned in the future taught me enough to let me, my mind, direct my future course. The Course in Miracles is so friggin' awesome. Okay, let, let's do a quick review because it's, I, you might have blanked out, okay, because it's so simple. It's really simple, okay? Most people don't realize that the only reason why they're planning is because they are uh, afraid. They think they're not going to have enough to eat. They may not have a place to stay. They might be out on the street. So people are busy making plans really because they are afraid. 
they are afraid that they've got to undertake their protection. But when you think you got to take care of yourself by yourself, that's costing you the truth. And the truth is you're not alone. The truth is you're supported by God. The truth is that you have the Holy Spirit, your higher self is with you. We don't usually recognize that self-initiated plans are just defenses because whenever you are making a plan, whenever a person is frightened and insecure and they're making a plan, what they're really doing is they're trying to control what's going to happen in the future because they don't think they're going to be provided for unless they take care of themselves. So then that puts all the emphasis on what you learned and experienced in the past because a person thinks that what they learned and experienced in the past it's going to be uh, enough that they, that, that they know enough now that it's going to allow them to direct the course of their future. So when you are focusing on the past and trying to use it to plan for the future, then you may be overlooking the new, present thoughts, feelings, emotions, beliefs, and teachings and learnings that you have right now. The next sentence says, the, plan, the mind that plans... The mind that plans is thus refusing to allow for change. Of course, the miracle says, read me slowly. Read me slowly. So let's say that again. The mind that plans is refusing to allow for change. So actually, do you know that people say, I really want to change. I want to change in my life. I want to change in my life. But then when they say they want to change, that thing's... They think that that means I need to immediately start to uh, plan uh, what should be happening in my future. But the truth is, the mind that plans, the mind that does self-initiated plans, that's a mind that's actually refusing to allow a real positive change to happen. Okay, how do you mean that, Earl? Because... <laughs> The reason why a mind that's planning based on their past and projecting that into the future, the reason why that person is allowing, is, is refusing to have a change in their life is because they're using what they learned before as a basis for what their goals should be in the future. So if I come up with the same basic type goals that I've always come up with, based on what I've learned in the future, based on what I've learned in the past, then I'm not really allowing a real change to happen because if I'm going back to my past learnings and experiences to come up with my latest goal for the future, then I'm basically gonna be doing the same thing in another form, which is looking outside of myself for happiness, not going to my creator, not healing the blocks between me and my connection with the higher power, which would actually allow a real change to happen. I'm really not allowing a real change to happen because I'm still doing what? I'm going to me. I'm just trying to do it on my own. I'm using my past experiences and beliefs to come up with my latest plan that's going to protect me and keep me safe. But I'm really not allowing for any real change because I'm not really doing anything any different. I'm still coming up with my own plans based on the values that I've learned from the world and the experiences and beliefs that I have. And then I'm trying to control what's gonna happen in the future. That's not really doing anything different. So you really are refusing to allow for a real change. So then let's go to the next line. It says, the mind's past experience directs its choice for what will happen. So a person plans for their future based on their past experiences. And so they're not really allowing for a real change because they're doing what they've always done, which is to try to come up with their own ideas for what's gonna make them happy on their own without consulting God, spirit, their higher self. They're still leaving God, the higher power, out. Whatever word, whatever term you want to use for anything that's greater than your own personal wisdom. I like the word God. I like the way the Course says Holy Spirit. So if a person is using, do you know that if a person is using their past experience to determine what their goals should be and what should happen in the future, then that's a person 
that's missing something. So what is the person that's doing self-initiated plans without God? What are they not seeing? Yeah, well, when you're so focused on the past and you're focused on the future, then you don't see that right here and right now is where your power is to really make a real change. If you're focusing on your past experience and your past beliefs, and you focused on what you want to uh, happen to you in the future, don't you see you're not really being present? So that means that you don't see that here and now, right here, right now, is everything you need to guarantee a future that's totally different from your past that did not make you happy. Right here, right now, is everything you need to guarantee a happy future that's completely different from what you went through that caused you fear and pain is in the past. If you're focused on your past experiences and your past beliefs and your past programming to determine what's going to happen to you in the future, if you're no longer trying to make, if you're not trying to make a contact and a connection with your greater self, your higher self, the Holy Spirit, then you're not really doing anything any different than the way you've always done it, so you're not really allowing for any real change in that relationship or situation or in your life. If you're trying to do it by yourself, without a spiritual connection of some type, where you're listening to a wisdom that's greater than your own, then you're not really doing anything different in your self-initiated plans than what you've always done. And so therefore, you're just guaranteeing the same dissatisfaction in the future. Right here, right now, is everything you need to guarantee that you can have a really incredible future that is completely different from anything that you've ever experienced in the past. So how do you have a future that's totally different from the past? Well, a future that's different from the past is a future without a continuity of any old ideas and sick beliefs. So how do you have a future different from the past? You don't continue to think the old way you have always thought. If you want to have a future that is different from the past, you don't continue your old thinking of separation and fear and doubt and guilt and anger and projection and blame and seeing yourself as a victim of everything and everyone. The way that you guarantee a happy future that's totally different from anything that you have ever experienced in the past is you don't continue with your old programming, conditioning, and thinking. Do you know the Course calls these old ideas sick beliefs? That the Course in Miracles says you, 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 you all have beliefs. You think you got bodies that are sick? You don't have bodies that are sick. You have minds that are sick. You have thinking that is sick. You have old ideas. What's an example of an old idea? Well, an example of an old idea would be a person coming up with self-initiated plans because they are afraid they won't be taken care of. And then they base those plans on what they can do by themselves using their past experiences and learnings and beliefs because they are so scared they're not going to be provided for that they uh, believe that they have to control what happens in the future and control other people sometimes because they are not really paying attention to the fact that they are receiving new thoughts, new ways of looking at things. That's of course in miracles is one example of that. You're being given a new way of looking at things that could create for you a future totally different from your past. Okay, listen to this. So the, what does the paragraph say? It's what it says, the mind that plans is thus refusing to allow for change. That means what you have learned before becomes the basis for what you set as a goal for you in the future. So uh, most people are letting their past experience direct their choices of what needs to happen in the future. I have a past experiences of believing that if I get a college degree, then I'll be taken care of in the future. So I'm really letting my past experience direct my choices. 
So if a person is using their past programming to determine their goals and choices, then the Course in Miracles says, you don't see that here and now is everything you need. So if you're following along with me in the book, you'd see I'm just following along. I'm just sharing. That's what I don't do. I don't, I try to let the Course in Miracles speak for itself through me by letting the Course in Miracles teach a Course in Miracles. So that's why I always work out of the book. I'm not here to give you Earl's wisdom, right? I'm not here to give you Earl's interpretation. I'm using the interpretations that the Course itself uses, but I'm doing it in plain language, which is telling you that if you want to let go of a past and you don't want to repeat that past anymore, you have to stop using the old ideas that you were programmed with. So when a person is really healed and allowing themselves to receive the divine plan, and then the divine plan will tell them what to plan, then that person is a person where anticipation plays no part at all. I'm not, I'm not uh, anticipating what's going to happen in the future. Uh, when you are following your real plan, your confidence in the present directs you. See, I let what the present is teaching me, the Course in Miracles is teaching me, I, let me give you an example. Right now, the Course in Mir Miracles told me that, Earl, if your mind is healed, you won't be trying to come up with your own plan for what's going to happen. What you would be doing, you would be getting rid of the blocks to being able to hear the divine plan for your life that would bring you perfect happiness. But that plan is going to come from a wisdom greater than yours. And how you can tell that you are following the divine plan. And the divine plan may say, go get a college degree. You know, one form it might take is the actual form of it at the level you can relate to, to people around you. It might look like you're making lots of plans. What you know, if you're a divine plan and you were sure that it was telling you that one of the forms that it takes is you're supposed to move out of town, well, then you would do what was necessary to move out of town. Somebody would be looking at you and thinking that you were making a lot of plans, right? But you were really carrying out the plan that you received from spirit. Because you know that if you follow the plan that you received from spirit, you know you will be able to do it, and that spirit wouldn't be asking you to do anything that you wouldn't be able and adequate to do. You also know that if spirit was in charge of the plan that you were following, you would not have a bunch of obstacles and blocks and struggles that would be impeding your progress. And if you were a conscious being, you would also know that a plan that comes from the Holy Spirit, a plan that comes from love, a plan that comes from God, is also going to be a plan that not only gives you complete joy and abundance and happiness and peace, but it's also going to give others complete joy and abundance and happiness with peace and peace also. Okay, so that would be an example of me using present knowledge and present teachings to overcome my past teachings, which would have told me that I needed to come up with a plan on my own by myself and that what was going to take care of me was something outside of me or just me. That's the old plan, right? And so I would just repeat the same thing I've done before in a, new, in a brand new form. So, so a person that has a healed mind that would be a person that who a person who is developing confidence in God and truth and what they're learning right now. And then I would be using what I'm learning right now. So if you think you are doing something different just because you come up with another plan, because you're afraid you won't be taken care of, so you come up with another plan based on your personal past. Which means if you if those if your programming had have been so perfect in the first place, you wouldn't even be afraid or worried about how you're gonna take care of yourself, which means you are now experiencing the result of your own self initiated plan that you've been following without divine guidance. How do you know that the situation that you're in right now is not a reflection of divine guidance? Well, because you're a frightened person trying to take care of yourself, which wouldn't be true if you were having present com present confidence in God. Now, the Course in Miracles teaches that there's no such thing as a punishing God, so, so our Creator totally loves us, so our Creator takes us exactly where we are in the situation that we're in. You know how a GPS, if you make a wrong turn, it, 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 it uh, readjusts itself from where you are. It doesn't tell you to go back 
necessarily to where you were when you made the wrong turn. It takes you where you are and corrects you from wherever you are. Well, that's what's happening. That's what happens with spirit. It takes you where you are. So then at the next paragraph, that's not now do you see why I say you need to listen to this at least four times? That I'm the divine repetition teacher, the remembering coach. Are you tempted right now to try to analyze what I'm saying from a course, from the Course in Miracles? Uh, don't analyze what I'm saying. Remember what I'm saying. If you plan for the future based on your past beliefs and old beliefs and programming, which is that you're separate on your own, got to figure it out on your own and control everything that's going to happen in the future based on you making up what you think is going to take care of you, then you really are not allowing for a real change to happen in your life. Because the, you would only be allowing a real change to happen in your life if you would, were to do it in a new way. And doing it in a new way would be your learning how to listen to a higher power, a greater wisdom than your own personal ego and own personal programming. So let's go to the next paragraph. It says, defenses are the plans you undertake to make against the truth. So our self-initiated plans, the course calls defenses. So another term for defenses is plans. So a plan is a defense. A defense is a plan. A defense is a plan. I'm trying to, I'm trying to protect myself from what I think could hurt me or attack me or not sustain me in the future. So plans are, are what frightened minds use. I'll put it this way. Self-initiated plans. Plans that you make without trying to tap into a higher power in yourself. A Course in Miracles answers the question of how do I get the blocks out of the way to being able to hear my own inner divine teacher. You need to be taught how to think in a way that doesn't block your higher self giving you the plan that will truly bring you joy. You need to be taught how to hear the voice of God and truth in you. That's what A Course in Miracles does. That's what any true wisdom text does or any true spiritual path does. It removes the faulty thinking and programming that you have that's blocking your happiness, your abundance, your good. So when you make a plan, from your ego, then the aim, it says, is to select what you approve and disregard what you consider incompatible with your beliefs of your reality, which is just a very simple way of saying that you are listening to me right now and you are selecting what you approve or agree with about what I'm saying and you're also disregarding what I'm saying that's incompatible with what you believe. So, do, so in an average conversation, what people are doing when they're listening to another person, do you know what they're doing? They're going, I approve of this statement you just made, but I, am, uh, I don't approve of this statement. So I, I don't believe what you're saying over here because it's incompatible with my beliefs about reality. You know, if you tell me that, my, that that the answer to the, everything that I'm going through is getting rid of the blocks that keep me from being able to hear the divine within myself, God within myself, spirit within myself, but I believe I'm on my own and I don't even believe there is a higher power, then I am going to make my plans based on the idea that there isn't a higher power. So I'm also going to approve of what you say that corresponds with what I believe, but I'm going to... Uh, not agree with anything that you say that's incompatible with my beliefs about reality. So what's really going to remain is actually meaningless. If, if you insist on believing that the way that you think and believe 
is correct, but you are unhappy, then the truth would be meaningless to you. Another way of looking at things that would help you would be meaningless to you. If, what, if the new way is incompatible with what you think is the truth, but don't you know if what you believe was truly the truth, you would already have the happiness, the joy, and the peace that you are seeking through setting a goal. So the Course in Miracles says, do you know that it's our reality? It's, it's, it's the truth that's the threat. See, when people hear stuff like this, which is the truth, that only love is real and that there is a higher power and that we need to learn how to listen to it and that if something was really coming to you from God, it would be something that you could do and you wouldn't be struggling and it would benefit everybody. And you're making all the plans that you're making because you're afraid that you're not going to be provided for. And then you're using all of your past experiences and beliefs to come, to come up with your goal. Then you're not really allowing for a change to happen because you're still doing the same thing you've always done. Just depend on yourself because you're scared. And so, so really, it's the truth that you are being given right now and the truth that I'm being given right now, that's the threat that our plans will attack and, and obscure and take apart and crucify. If I'm going to believe what's not true, then what is true is going to seem like a threat. It's going to seem, if I'm really responsible for my experience and I create everything that happens in my perception, I create everything that happens in my perception of my life, Right. And then I but I believe that I'm a victim of everything that happens to me and I don't really have any power and everything outside of me needs to be different in order for me to be happy. Then somebody that tells me like an Earl Purdy that the truth is that uh, I am a powerful being and I am responsible and I do make and create what happens to me. Then I'm going to not want to agree with that. I'm going to see that as incompatible with my beliefs. So the truth I'm going to throw away but I'm going to continue to believe that the way that I've been thinking that hasn't really made me happy is the thing that I still need to stick with. So how do you know if your plan is the wrong plan, the wrong-minded plan? You are afraid. If you're using the wrong perception, you feel guilt and insecurity and alone and sick and lonely. If you're using the incorrect path, you are without joy and you are afraid. Doesn't mean, that does not mean you are a bad person. It doesn't mean if you're unhappy that you are a sinful bad person. It just means you are still using old ideas that you learned in the past that are not truly serving you. Because if those ideas from the past were truly serving you, you would feel completely fulfilled right now. And while you're, and while you're planning for your future based on the experiences and events in the past, you're overlooking that right here and right now is the, is the new way of looking at things. So you have everything you need right now to guarantee the Course in Miracles is one way. It's not the only way. But for those who I'm primarily teaching the Course in Miracles is the way that they can have that new way of looking at things that will make their future truly different from the past. One of my favorite paragraphs in this lesson is the one, this is the next paragraph when it says, uh, what couldn't, what could you not accept if you but knew that everything that happens, all the events, past, present, and to come, are planned by one whose only purpose is your good. Could you accept what I'm saying to you right now? If you knew that everything that's going to happen to you, every event that's going to happen to you, every event uh, that happened to you in the past, and every event that happens right now, and everything that happens in the future, is really planned by one whose only purpose is your good. Everything you, one of the workbook lessons is I do not perceive my own best interest. And then it also says, what well, sounds like a total par paradox, which is it said, then it turns around and says, everything is for my own best interest. 
So what so what could you not handle if you knew everything that has ever happened to you is really for your own best interest? That everything that's ever happened to you could be used for your own best interest. Everything that's ever happened to you and every event that's happened to happening to you now and every event that's going to happen to you in the future is planned by God, Spirit, the divine, whose only purpose is your good. Let go of the yes but. Drop the yes but. Drop the yes but. Drop the yes but. I know what you, I know I got an ego just like yours, so I know exactly what some of your egos are doing. It's going, yes, but, yes, but you can't tell me that me getting, you know, put laid off my job was for my own good. You can't tell me being laid up in the hospital was for my own good. Yeah, it's everything that's happening to you is ultimately for your own good, whether you realize it or not. Perhaps you've misunderstood God's plan. He says, perhaps what's really happening is that you're misunderstanding the plan. And how, what would be an example of you misunderstanding God's plan? Or misunderstanding God, the creator. Well, the Course in Miracles says, well, you are misunderstanding love's plan if you ever think that God or love would offer pain to you. So any, any plan that's coming from love, any plan that's ultimately coming from the divine would never be a plan that would give you pain. So you misunder, you misunder, you're misunderstanding God's plan if you think following God's plan is going to require you to suffer and sacrifice. If you're misunderstanding the divine plan, do you know that you're misunderstanding the divine plan? If you think the divine plan means that you uh, have to suffer. No, you're only suffering because you're following your own plan. But even that will be used to your advantage by spirit. Now, because the course, is, the course says, but, but your defenses didn't let you see God's loving blessing shine in every step you ever took. Okay, so why, why is it that a person doesn't see everything that happened to them in the past as a blessing? Because it says, well, your defenses don't let you see it. Your, your fear, your, your plans, the, the way you see things doesn't let you see that there was a blessing in every single solitary thing that's ever happened in, in your life. There, there can be a blessing that you get out of every single solitary thing that ever happened in your life. There's a way that you can see and receive a blessing out of anything and everything that's ever happened to you in your life. Do you know that why you were planning for death, and we call it life insurance, and making sure I got enough money at the end of my life in retirement before I die? We literally make plans for death. And this is what the next sentence says. That's why the Course in Miracles kind of trip me, trips me out, you all. Because the only thing that it says is stuff that we do all the time. But when it says it back to us, that there's a part of us that's tempted to go, I don't understand that. What do you mean you don't understand that a self-initiated plan is a plan that you are making to uh, uh, to be able to be safe and to take care of yourself in the future? So you're trying to control the future and you're trying to control the future based on your past learnings and experiences. And if you're doing that, it's because there's some part of you believes that unless you take care of yourself, you're not going to be taken care of. So you are really refusing to allow for a change because a real change would be you using a whole new way of approaching things and seeing things that you learn right now. Like perhaps what I'm telling you from A Course in Miracles is different from what you normally would have thought. So right here and right now, you can, you're you being given a solution. That's what, the, that's what the Course is saying. While a person is so busy trying to look at things the way that they looked at it in the past, they don't see the new opportunities to see things in a new way right now. And what is it that you couldn't accept if you knew everything that happens is being planned by the divine God, spirit, love, whose only purpose is your good. And if you think that God's plan would involve anything other than love, then you have misunderstood the plan because God would never offer pain and suffering and guilt to you. But your own defenses, your own plans, your own programming doesn't let you see the loving blessings that shine in every step you ever took. So while you were making plans for death, like human beings do in one form or another, your spirit and the truth has led you gently to eternal life. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. <laughs> you, you're looking at a, you're listening to a person who has done the course and trusted 
that the Holy Spirit would take care of me through those who appreciate what I do and other ways. Because he said we would be, that we would be, you know, I'd be, I would be taken care of if I was willing to be a messenger. So it, it was exactly what I knew I could learn it best if I was teaching it and trying to demonstrate it myself. So I'm teaching what I need to learn. The only difference between me, I feel, and new people is that I go straight to the course and try to remember everything that it's saying and say the prayers and apply the ideas without trying to analyze them to death. I actually give it attention and study. So I go to the solution. I immediately go to the trunk when I got a flat tire to get the jack. Where new course students and new truth students are more like, they hear, they hear about it's a jack in the trunk, but they're too busy analyzing whether it's a jack in the trunk and what brand of the jack it is that they don't actually go get the jack out of the trunk and then change the tire. They're still analyzing whether or not the jack is a credible way to change the tire. I don't do that anymore. I go straight to what it's saying because I've gotten such results from listening to a plan that's coming from a wisdom greater than my own. So the truth is, while you've been making plans for death and fear and unhappiness, your spiritual self is trying to lead you gently to a life of eternal joy and constant joy and constant peace. So I'm going to do a really quick recap of the basic things that I covered today. And I want you to read this lesson because I'm going to go through this whole lesson uh, over the next several weeks or however long it takes because um, it's not how much of the Course in Miracles you cover, it's how much you remember and how much you apply. So I'd rather you walk away with one idea to, in, in, from listening to this that you're going to keep in mind. Because every time your mind says, how am I going to do this? I always tell people, go to the book, pick the book up, study it, listen to my classes, listen to other classes on the course. You know, you are not going to get it by not being willing to give something some attention, give this some attention and some study. There's no magical teacher that's going to answer something that's going to in and of itself change your whole perception of life. But a good teacher is a good motivator. So if there's anything that I can do to motivate you to want to stop suffering enough to listen to a wisdom greater than your own and realize that that wisdom is available to you and that if you were really doing your divine plan, then you would not be so afraid that you think you have to come up with so many self-initiated plans that you're trying to do on your own. I'm a full-time teacher of A Course in Miracles. If you'd like to make a donation, you can go to earlpurdy.com. Uh, and do it, or you can use Zelle, and you can use Venmo, and you can use PayPal, and you can use the Cash app. Um, all you need is Earl Purdy at EarlPurdy.com. That's my email, Earl Purdy at EarlPurdy.com. If you want to work with me on a one-on-one, -on -one, because you're really ready to go deeper and to also let go of some blocks and some issues that you've been dealing with, then I'm available for what I call Clarity Sessions. Clarity Sessions. Go to my website, it will explain it in detail, and then you can self-book a session with me right online. I have hundreds of classes on YouTube, hundreds of classes on Facebook. Please share these videos. Listen to them at least four times. Ah, oh, I'm so glad that you're here. Sundays at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, I do another Facebook Live on the Earl Purdy page. Uh, uh, and uh, you can also attend in person if you're in Denver on Sundays at 1 p.m. at 1555 Race Street. 1555 Race Street. Denver, Colorado, 80206. Okay? Those of you who are open and receptive to astrological, numerological insight, I'm also available for that too. Okay? Spirit speaks to us in many different ways. And so just go to my website. I'm so glad to get a chance to talk to you. So here we go. Here's a quick two-minute review of what I covered. I always look at your comments. And if you want to be a part, if you, want to, if you would like to take part in deeper studies with me when I do some workshops and you want to be the first to know, please email me at earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com and let me know so I can add you to the list of people that's, uh, that would like to take part in an advanced mind training because I'm going to 
first contact of people who have already let me know they like to do it. Okay, so let's go back. So remember, a heel man doesn't plan. A heel man carries out plans that it receives through listening to wisdom that's greater than its own. So listening to the wisdom of God. You wait until you've been taught what to do, and then you do it. Also, a plan that comes to you from God is going to be a plan that you can do. It won't be a plan that you can't do. You will be very adequate for the plan that you receive from God. And also, you will not have a lot of obstacles if you're following the true divine plan, why? Because you would be adequate to do the job. The plan that comes from your divine self, the plan that comes from your real self, the plan that really makes for happiness is going to be a plan that benefits more people than just you. And so in you, and also the Course said that whenever you do the divine plan meant for you correctly, then the health of your body is assured. Then we were told that Says self-initiated plans are just defenses that a frightened person uses because they are afraid that they need to take care of themselves because they don't believe that they're going to be taken care of by spirit. So they have to come up with a lot of plans. So people who are afraid and who are planning a lot, that's a person who's trying to control what's going to happen in the future. So they also have a temptation to want to control other people. That's because the mind that's engaged in planning for itself without trying to tune into its higher self, that's a plan that that's a person that don't think they're gonna be provided for unless they provide for themselves. So you don't want to increase your fear. So you if you think you really need to plan, even if it's a self-initiated plan, I would say that's okay. You do what you do whatever you think you need to do to keep your fear down. But realize that if you're using a self-initiated plan that's based on your past programming and experiences and beliefs, then you're really going to just make a future that's just a reflection of what you went through in the past. So you have really refused to allow for change. Right here, right now is everything you need to guarantee a positive change in your experience by using wisdom texts like the Course in Miracles or other wisdom texts, but you don't want to use them the old beliefs that you learned from the world, that you are separate and alone and just a body and don't have any personal power, that you are a victim of everything. Also, I want to ask you to keep in mind that sometimes you may be hearing something that you don't necessarily agree with and it actually be true. Everything Everything, everything that's happening, everything that's happened, all events, past, present, and to come in your life are gently planned by God, Spirit, love, whose only purpose is your good. Everything that's going to happen to you in the future is being planned by one whose only purpose is your good. Remember, a, a plan that comes from love, a plan that comes from your creator, would never be a plan that gives you pain. The, a, a plan that comes from love is not a plan that gives you fear and guilt. So you can tell when you come up with your plan, because if it's your plan, you're going to have a lot of anticipation. You're going to feel a lot of fear and, and uncertainty about it. That's, that's your way of knowing that it's your plan. But if you were to accept what you're hearing, and you don't have to, but if you would accept what you're hearing right now, then you would tell yourself, Everything that's going to happen to me is being gently planned by one whose only purpose is my good. So everything is for your own best interest. Everything in your life can be used for a blessing. Everything that's ever happened to you in the past can be used as a blessing, as a blessing, as a blessing. God's loving blessing is shining in every step that you take. So what is it that you need to walk away from Walk away with this, that the practical application of this idea and how to make this happen and to have that peace and joy that you want, how to make that happen is in the study of A Course in Miracles or any true wisdom course or text. 
learn how to listen to wisdom greater than your own ego. Learn how to listen to wisdom that's greater than your own. A Course in Miracles teaches you how to remove those blocks that keep you from hearing the divine plan that only brings you joy and happiness and fun and peace and healing into your life. Listen to this at least four times. Watch it at least four times. Please share this class. And I'm going to read every comment. I appreciate you so much. May the course be with you.